Hello, it's Doris, and I'm here to share my Merry Christmas to Me book haul. The day after Christmas, I went to Books A Million, and I didn't have a clear-cut plan. There was one book that I knew I wanted to get, and a couple things that I might want to get, and then I just wanted to have fun, really, browsing and picking up things. So, this was my definite, The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. I'm not even going to tell you what this is about because everybody knows. Maybe you don't know. It's been so popular this year. World War II, Two Sisters, and right up my alley completely. So I'm excited to get started with this one. And honestly, right now I'm feeling like my middle school years, that Christmas morning after your gifts are open and they're all displayed back under the tree and there's just all the books and yeah that's how I'm feeling right now this is so exciting I don't even know where I'm gonna begin with reading them all but oh, I'm so happy so the next one was a maybe uh, one of my plans for 2017 is to read more Amy Tan to finish off Amy Tan's novels. I've read most of them, but I found two that I haven't read. So I thought I might get one of those. I wasn't sure because I was going to the used bookstore the next day and I thought since they were older books, they might be readily available there, but I ended up getting one. <laughs> the cover was just so gorgeous. Yes, beautiful. So I got that one and I'm still on search for the other one that I'm needing. And then I mentioned that I would probably get this one, and I did. I just can't resist. I'm a sucker for a pretty cover, apparently. But I just can't resist that. And I have most of the Harry Potter series, plus the, um, the UK play that's being panned. But anyway... <laughs> I'm just loving this, and I loved this movie so, so, so much that I'm happy to have this. She did a great job with that screenplay. Magical. So then this next one was, during my browsing, it was one I decided to go ahead and get. It's a nonfiction, and I actually saw that the Poptimist reviewed this, and... Unfortunately, I didn't watch it before going to the bookstore, and then I ended up getting this. I couldn't resist it. It just... I'm from the Deep South. I don't need to say anything else <laughs> of the United States. Um, so, yeah. So, I, I love the Poptimus. If you haven't watched his videos, they're just a treat. He does such a good job and puts so much work into them, unlike me. Um... But yeah, but now I'm afraid to watch his review because I don't want to ruin my experience with this one in case he didn't like it. Um, but I'm really excited that it's there because I'm definitely going to watch it when I finish reading it to hear what he says about it. So then I there was a, one of those buy two and get a third free tables and they were the floppy big paperbacks that I like and... I noticed this one there right away, another just stunning cover, and I've heard this reviewed several times, and it won the Man Booker a couple years ago. So I was very much interested in having this because I thought, you know, there's more likely that I'll read it if I own it. So I thought, mm, yeah, let's get, let's get three more books. <laughs> so I found that one. And then I had seen this Neil Gaiman American Gods on the table. And that was another definite because I've wanted to read this for a couple years now. And again, I'm more likely to get it read owning it. You know, when you're in the mood, you can just grab it. And then I needed a third. And I just kind of looked around. What do I get? What do I get? And I found this one, The Rosie Project. And I think this is going to be fun. This was um, a genetics professor who decided that he wanted to get married. And being a scientist, you know, he just devises a plan for that to happen. And it'll be funny to see how the plan works out. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to reading these. All of these, I'm just so excited. 
They're such amazing books. So then I went to our local um, used bookstore, McKay's, which is an amazing bookstore. And it was the day after the day after Christmas, and I had no clue that that's like book shopping day because the place was packed. And I was afraid it was going to be picked over, and it probably was, but I still found way too many books. So I had to kind of come up with a plan for how I was going to narrow down my choices. And I'll talk about that as I get to them. So the first one here, these are by order of size, in case you were wondering. <laughs> Middle March by George Eliot, and I picked this one up because, um, who is that? Something about literary puns. I'll link her below. I just love her. She is so intelligent. Yes, I love her. But anyway, she is doing a some sort, she hasn't said what, but she's doing some project with Middle March, maybe a read along sort of thing. In March, March is my birthday, so let's celebrate. Yes. And I've got to get the, they put these stickers on the front. I've got to get all those off. It's annoying to me. And then continuing on the classics trend, I got Silas Marner. I just thought this was a beautiful copy and nice and floppy. And this is my mother's favorite book from, she read it in high school and she, Still talks about it to this day, and yeah, and I, I don't even know why I've never read it, but I'm going to read it this year for her so we can talk about it together. And then these others, let's see. So, so then, like I said, I had all these books in my basket. Like, I'd found a set, like the complete set of Tolkien in a nice floppy, pretty cover, not the movie series, and I had those in my basket. And, um, I'm, I had some, I've been wanting to reread The Sound and the Fury, and then I want to read another, um, of his, Faulkner, um, but I don't, I haven't really researched enough to know which one would be the best. I'm thinking A Light in August, but I found a nice series of those too, nice and floppy and pretty covers, and I had those in my, my basket, and... I don't know, a bunch of other stuff. And I just couldn't get all those books because I didn't want to overwhelm myself more than I have because it's ridiculous. But I finally narrowed it down to the middle March book and the one for my mother that I, I had a plan for one of those and the other one was just sentimental and I need to do it. And then the bulk of the rest of these are for, for um, Diversathon in January. I really um, love cultural stories. That's my jam. So that's just a no-brainer for me. So all of these, I just narrowed it down to the cultural ones. So I have Anne Patchett, State of Wonder. And I've never heard of Anne Patchett, but once I picked this one up and read the cover, I'm very much intrigued. And then I... I've been online racing, researching her since, and I, I think, I, I mean, I'm going to be incredibly seriously disappointed if I don't love this author, because I think she's one of my, my kind of people. But anyway, I got Ann Patchett's State of Wonder. This is, it's set in the Amazon, and Dr. Marina Singh and she's looking for Dr. Annick Swenson, her former mentor. I don't know. Looks cool. And she's got another one out that's more recent with oranges on the front. And it's gorgeous because I, I said, you know, I love covers. I'm, I'm a sucker for covers. So I want to read this one right away so that I know she's like an author that I like so that I can buy the book with the oranges on the cover. So this will definitely be in January. Shallow. I'm shallow. <laughs> I found Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Safon for $2. And like this one keeps showing up all over booktube too. So I was like $2 is a no brainer. And it also fits in with my diversathon genre. 
And yeah, this is in Barcelona. And it's all about looking for books. It has to be fabulous. Then, oh, this one was a no-brainer too. And the Mountains Echoed by Khaled Hosseini. I have read The Kite Runner and A Thousand Splendid Sons, and this author is just heart-wrenching, but it's just so, he's so spot on. And so, uh, he's a really important read for the times we're in, in my opinion. I would highly suggest that you read one of his novels. So, I know I'm going to get something out of this one. I just like that author a lot. These other ones, this one, Isabel Allende, I thought that I'd read a couple of hers. Like, I know she's a good author. And I went to look online today and I can't remember which two I've read. I know I've read Paulo, which I thought was a little odd, but I thought there was another one that I read that I really liked, but I can't find it. So, I don't know. But I did find a really awesome interview that I'm going to watch this afternoon. It's more like a documentary on her. <laughs> so, it's fun what you find when you start getting excited about books. So, anyway, Isabel Allende, this is Island Beneath the Sea, and I think part of it's set in Haiti, and I'm pretty excited about all my beautiful books. This one, I'm not sure about, so I'm curious if anyone has heard of this one. The Roundhouse by Louise Erdrich, yeah. This is Native American, New York Times bestseller. National Book Award winner. Surely it's a good one, but I just know nothing about it. So I'd be curious to hear if you know anything. And then this one was, I guess, irresistible. I wasn't attracted to it initially, but then just people more and more and more keep talking about how amazing it is. And then I found it at the used bookstore and it wasn't that cheap. It was $13.50 which I don't know normally it might have been closer to 26 yeah uh, so yeah the unseen world by Liz Moore and this is somewhat techie a, a homeschooled girl apparently brilliant raised by her father and then does he disappear and she's trying to figure out what happened to his research and what it was all about. But people just are raving about how profound this one is. So, and also I'm thinking this is one that my sisters would both like. So I'm pretty excited to read it and then pass it on to them to maybe read. So then those are the ones I bought. And then a sweet friend sent me an unexpected package and she sent four arcs that she had. So I thought that was so kind of her. And I'm not familiar with these authors. These are all young adult. So, well, actually I'm familiar with one. This is Traveler. The cover is a Nautilus shell. And it's by Swoon Reads as the publisher. So, I'm a little iffy on the teen romance. is not my thing all the time unless it's like, like, I really liked um, The Sun is Also a Star, that kind of thing. But, yeah. Jessa has spent her life dreaming of other worlds and writing down stories more interesting than her own. Oh, no, I might like that. I like other worlds a lot. This one, this is the one I've heard of. The Boy in the, at the Top of the Mountain. This is by John Boyne, who wrote The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. And this is not one that I would pick up for myself because, don't kill me, but I did not like the boy in the striped pajamas all that much. I'll talk about it after I read the book. But anyway, I got this one and I'm really kind of interested to read it because I just read another young adult, or that's more middle, middle grades. I just read another middle grades um, Holocaust World War II book, so I think that'll be... I like to read books together like that. I think it gives you a nice reading experience to read 
two books that relate back to back like that. Anyway, I'll keep you posted. And then I have Nemesis by Anna Banks. And this looks like a fantasy fiction type of book. The princess didn't expect to fall in love with her nemesis. We probably don't need to read more than that. This one was an October 2016 release. The boy in the top at the top of the mountain was June of 2016. The traveler is February 2017. And this last one, Love and First Sight. And I kept stumbling over this title because Love at First Sight is, you know, what we're used to reading. But Love and First Sight. And but then when I read the back, it totally made sense. It's um it's another teenage love story, but one that I like because it's not just a love story. There's more to it. Uh, this is a boy who's been blind his whole life, and he's starting a new school, and he meets a girl, and they develop a relationship. I don't know if it's a romance at that time, but friendship or whatever. And then an unexpected opportunity for a vision-correcting surgery comes up, and... It's all about how things look different when you can see the person that you're interested in. I don't know. I'm kind of intrigued by this one, so I'm going to read it pretty quick. Yep. So those are my books, and I told myself that, that I wasn't going to buy any more until my birthday because that's this is significant. This is 19 new books, which... Some might say that's obscene. I might even say that's obscene. But I'm happy about it, so I don't care what I might say to myself. <laughs> but I did say, that's it. That's it. No more until at least March, my birthday. And then, <sighs> this Diversathon thing, they're going to read that Homegoing book. And I tried to buy that at Books A Million, but the, the here I go being shallow again. But, but the U.S. cover is just so boring compared to the gorgeous UK cover, the international cover, which is just stunning. And I couldn't make myself buy the boring cover. And then what do I do? I get on Amazon later the evening after my second mega book haul. Lo and behold, there it is on Amazon finally. I've been stalking the book and there it was. So I bought it along with two other books. I had also been looking for hidden figures in both bookstores and couldn't find it. Like, at Books A Million, they said, well, there's one copy in the store, and it could be in one of five places, but they couldn't find it. So I couldn't find hidden figures, and I thought, well, I'll just watch the movie. But since I was ordering the other book, I ordered that one. And then the other book was A Man Called O, which is another one that I've been hearing crazy things about. So... When those come in, I'll show them to you, and and then I got a $3 credit to Barnes & Noble, and that's tempting me, and then I went on Book Depository for the first time. I've never even knew that existed, and, you know, I mentioned that I don't have a peripheral in Mini anymore, and I found a copy with an armadillo on the cover. I'm just a cover junkie, apparently, but I collect armadillos, so I kind of need that. So, what I'm saying is, there might be a January book haul. Anyway, that's all I got for now. I'll chat with you soon. Bye!